Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool jukebox repair video for you. We've been working on this Rockola 480 Tecna jukebox that was made in 1980. And we've done several videos on it, and so if you did not see those, go check them out. Now, most of our, or a lot of our people that watch these videos, it's because they have one of their own that's broke. So if you have a Rockola that's anywhere near 1980, it's going to be similar to this and have some of the same components. So... You may have a 484 or a 490 or something like that. It'll be similar to this, so uh, hopefully you can find something in this video that you can use. But what we're going to talk about today is this right here. We get all kinds of questions about this. This is the Rockola Hit Tracker Popularity Meter. And so we get people asking us about these... Um, theirs doesn't work or, or this and that and uh, essentially if you're if you're putting this in your house or even if you're operating it anymore it's irrelevant if this thing works or not the machine will work uh, with the thing completely missing from the machine and unplugged the only purpose of this really uh, was for the operator and we'll talk about that here in a minute so on this particular machine it's a 480 uh, any of them that you, any rock hole you have will have the mechanism, of course, down at the bottom that actually plays the record and has the uh, uh, the magazine with the records in it. And then it's got the associated um, um, equipment that helps it find the proper record. You will have a power supply in your unit, no matter what brand, what model rock hole you have. You will have an amplifier in your unit. Uh, that now they may look different or be different model numbers depending on which one. And then you will have some kind of thing that actually runs the the uh, machine. So these ones that have circuit boards, they have, like this one has the profit setter. Some of the later ones had the central command control unit or whatever it was called. Uh, so any of these ones that are, um, um, I hate to say solid state, but once they went to the, the microprocessor versions, they have some kind of computer running them. If you've got one that's older than just a little bit before this one. So if you've got one that's uh, maybe a four, I don't know when they, they started using the microprocessors, but if you've got one from the 70s, it likely doesn't even need the computer. It just has uh, uh, more of push buttons and things like that to make it work. Um, you also have the, the uh, um, display over here and your push buttons over here. Um, and then they added in this popularity meter. Now there was something similar to this to, in all of them where down here on the front of the machine, on a bunch of them, there would be a big round wheel. And the purpose of that was, is as a record was selected on that wheel on the front of the mechanism, it would count, okay, record number 125 was just played. And it had this little, they had little pins that stuck out a certain, a certain amount of every time it was played. And it would basically keep track of how many times each record was played. Right, so in these little bit more modern ones, 1980, they had the hit tracker, which would track the hits, the popularity meter, and it basically is a little computer that keeps track of every record that was played and how many times it was played. Like this one says, record number 97 was played 999 times. So that's obviously not right, or it needs to be reset or something. Right? But we're going to get all into that. Um, and then it says uh, top three display. And on the front of the box, it would say location, top hits, micro computed. Number one was record number 100. Number two was record number 110. Number three was record number 120. Obviously, it's not actually keeping track of which ones are being played. Uh, I, there's usually a battery in that unit, and the battery's probably long dead. So uh, we're going to take this all out and check it out today, though, and see if we can get it working again, if you're interested in, on that, for your box. The part out here would kind of convince you uh, which record is popular, so maybe you might want to try the same one. Maybe they're trying to get you to, uh, uh, oh, everybody's playing record number 100, why don't you give it a try, <laughs> right? But the, uh, the real purpose of it was so that it could keep track of how much each record was played for the operator. So why would that be important? Well, let's say you put this in a honky-tonk. <laughs> And you've got a, you've got a, the new, the hot new in 1980, Randy, uh, what Randy Travis wasn't out then, the hot new Conway Twitty record in your honky tonk, and you put that sucker in there, and then you come back the next week, 
did that record make you any money? Well, you have no way of knowing. How would you possibly know? How many times was it played? I don't know. You kind of need something to keep track of them all, right? And so let's say you come in and, and uh, this week you want to see if the new, uh, if the Barbara Mandrell record, has anybody been playing the Barbara Mandrell record? And then you find out something shocking. The Barbara Mandrell record was only played one time all week. It's almost useless. Nobody likes it, right? So now you have the, you've got the new Conway Twitty record here. Well, which one are you going to take out of the, out of the magazine? You're going to take out that Barbara Mandrell record that nobody's listening to, as if there ever was a Barbara Mandrell record that nobody listened to, but you get my point, right? So you take out the, you take out the one that nobody listened to, and there, there's probably some each week that had zero plays. You take that record out and you put your new hot one in in place of that, because the worst thing you could do is take out that hot Conway Twitty record and put in a different one and then your, your, your money might actually go down the next week, right? So it was very important to the operators to have some way of keeping track of what records people liked and what records people did not like. So that's the whole purpose of this thing. Um, they, you know, they did the little flashy thing on the front where they show the, uh, the, the customers what the most popular records were too, trying to get you to uh, maybe think that, oh, maybe I should listen to that, that's the new hot one or whatever, everybody's listening to that. But in reality, it was just to keep track of it for the operators so that they would know how to make more money. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and then finally, this board here is a flasher board, they call it. And on this particular one, you can set it up to where it gives you a special bonus at a certain time. Um, and you could set it up different ways, but it starts flashing this light and it changes the pricing so that um, I, don't, I don't remember how they had it set up, but basically they can make it where for a certain amount of time you have special bonus prices. This says uh, 25 cents, if I can read it without the length. So usually you get one record for a quarter. This is three records for a quarter. Usually you get three records for 50 cents. This one is six records for 50 cents. So basically while this is flashing, you get double the amount of plays um, or triple the amount for a quarter, I guess. Um, is that right? Triple the amount? Yeah, okay. Um, so that that's what that is for. We're not really going to mess with that in this video because it that's really useless. But this is kind of neat because it has uh, digits displayed on it. Whenever people come up, they kind of it would be kind of neat if that works, right? So I'm going to pull this out, and it's a very simple little circuit. Basically, what happens is as the computer plays a song, it also sends information over to this, and this literally just keeps track of it. It doesn't have any kind of real output except for this display here um, and the display that's actually mounted on it. So it doesn't run anything, it doesn't control anything, and that's why you can unplug it and take it out of your machine. This will continue to send information down the wire, but it's just, it's literally just so this has something to, to count. So if it's unplugged, the, the information doesn't do anything and it doesn't hurt the machine uh, because it's not necessary to play. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, oh, let me show you quick before I turn it off, if you notice if you wiggle this ribbon cable, the displays go in and out. So sometimes these displays don't look quite right. So if you've got like a digit missing or something, this will probably help you fix yours. So I'm gonna take that out and we'll look at it on the bench and see, uh, see what it looks like inside. Okay, so here's what it looks like out of the machine. We'll look at the manual here in a minute just to see what they claimed this thing was capable of. Um, but you see there's a reset button here and a clear button here, but they're, they're uh, recessed. You have to push a pin or something into them to actually hit the buttons. There is a LED here that comes on that measures the 9.6 volts, which is the weird voltage that they use to run the whole machine. The other uh, CPU runs on 9.6 volts too, the, uh, the uh, profit setter, the computer that runs everything. They have a little vacuum crystal display up here which is uh, what they, the three uh, displays are on the front as well. And then there's just one plug that plugs in. Okay. We'll check that out on the schematics too to see exactly what all it sends to it. All right. And then it says display on or off. So I believe that means the three displays on the front because you might not want to display what the most popular uh, uh, selection is. And then this says most times selected or least times selected. So I guess that's a 
when you're running through your numbers, you might want to see which ones were the least popular, like I said, so you could replace the record. And then uh, popularity and total selection. So we'll see about that. Let me take the cover off of it here, and we'll see what it looks like underneath. And then we'll see if we can do anything with it. All right. Hmm. We appear to have gotten very lucky. Someone has removed the battery. I thought that's what was going on. It looks like you can probably see the battery through this um, through this hole on the cover. So that's good. Somebody's removed the battery, it appears, unless there's one under it or something. Um, and the reason that's good is because if they don't remove it, they leak and they start eating things up. So when you take yours apart, you might have some serious corrosion problems going on. And we may still have some too if I look underneath that here in a second. Uh, what I'm interested in, though, is what kind of RAM was that holding voltage for? That will be interesting to figure out, because there may be a situation where you can replace it um, with, with another type of RAM that doesn't need a battery, and it would work without the battery. But we're, we're going to end up just putting a, a remote battery, or I may put a, I think I'll put a, a button cell battery on it. Um, but yeah, everything looks cool. Let me take it out of here and we'll look at the back of it and see if we've got any corrosion problems. Okay, so there's no goodies on the back. It's just a very simple circuit board. Oop, I just added that. We'll talk about it in a second. No corrosion. We got really lucky on this one. A lot of times uh, you will not be this lucky. Um, but somebody in the past was able to clip that battery off. Thank you, whoever that was. You just saved me probably an hour's worth of work. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go look in the manual, and let's let's look at how they describe this and what they say that it does. And I, I especially want to know what voltage the battery needs to be. I think I know. And I want to see what RAM chip the, the battery is actually uh, providing power to. All right, I'm looking in the manual for a 476, a 481, and a 484, supposedly. And this is the hit tracker. This one is slightly different, though. If you look, the, the little slide lever is slightly different. But we're going to read what they said about it originally. Just so we know. Electronic popularity meter. One of the functions of the microprocessor is to keep a tally on the number of times each record is played. A battery in the system maintains the correct count even if the power cord is disconnected. Well, we went too far. For customer information, the three most popular selections are monitored externally on three-digit displays. Selection count of most or least records played are displayed internally on a five-digit display lo located on the pop counter board. So in other words, if you set that on least, it doesn't change the, t the three on the front, of course, to say the least popular ones. That wouldn't be very effective. <laughs> Um, two digits on the left side show the last two digits of a record number. The number of times the record has been selected is shown on the right three digits. So they, interestingly, they don't keep track of A and B sides because it's on the same record. So like if you've got a B side that nobody plays, well, the A side might be decent. So you wouldn't want to take out the one that nobody's playing the B side because... You know, and there's some records, you know, you can put the record in either way. So sometimes the operator would put it in backwards and the better songs on the B side. Some records just had a better B side than an A side. The old uh, steam song, uh, na 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 na, hey hey, goodbye, whatever. That was the B side of that record and it went to number one. I don't even know what the A side was. So, you know, um, but because they're joined, you know, they don't keep track of who, if they were playing the A side or the B side. You can probably figure it out by looking at most records. Um, but again, if, you know, if they're playing one record, it doesn't really matter which side they're playing. You're going to leave that record in there. Uh, the number of times the record has been selected is shown on the right three digits. To read the least played record, set the three position slide switch to least popular position. Now in ours, it's not a three position switch, it's a specific switch. Pushing and releasing the advance button, the records are read out one at a time from zero selection to the highest count. The most played records are read out when the slide switch is set to most popular position. Operating the advance button, the record count will read the highest to the lowest. To show the total count of all the selections, set the slide switch to total selections 
and press the advance button. When button is released, the total count will appear on the five digit display. So that's the total times it's been played if it hasn't been cleared. The hit tracker may be cleared or reset at any time to provide an accurate record of activity during a particular time period. Operating the clear button erases all accumulated play data from the module. The total selections display returns to zero and the selections number appearing in the location top hits displays are replaced by dashes. Okay. The selection numbers appearing in the location top hits display are replaced by dashes. That's interesting because on ours, uh, we have no battery. So I guess what's going on is when it starts up, it's got some kind of data that's just preloaded but hasn't been cleared. So that's why it says the 100, 110, 120. Um, the reset button also erases the play data. However, the location top hits remain unaffected. So see, that's really useful. So if you hit clear... Um, If you hit clear, it, release, it removes everything that's been played, and it resets the three numbers on the front. If you hit reset, though, it, re it erases everything that's been played, but the top hits remain unaffected. So that would kind of be the way to do it, hit the reset button. Um, but if you, did, if you changed one of the top hit records, or if you changed some records, I guess you would want to reset the top hit thing, too, because the one that's listed as most popular might not be in the machine anymore if you changed it out. Um... Test procedure for hit tracker, popularity meter, main power off, hit tracker connected, move the three position switch to total selection, uh, press the red clear button, hit tracker display must show a zero in the first digit to the right only with the other four digits off, the top three hits display in front must show blank, 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 we'll try doing that, move the uh, slide switch to most popular position, the hit tracker display should show five zeros, return the slide switch to the total selection position center, Add at least 12 credits via the white add one play button on the profit setter that is on there and select 297 three times, 284 two times, and 185 once. That's interesting. The hit tracker display must only show six on the first digit to the right and the three top hits display must indicate 297, 284, 185. Move the slide switch to the most popular position. The hit tracker display must show 97003. Oh, so uh, record 97 has been played three times. Press the gray advance button once. The hit tracker menu must change to 84002. Press the advance button again. The hit tracker display must change to 85001. I think what we'll do is we'll try this uh, with those actual numbers just for the heck of it. Now, they might be the crappiest records of all time, but we'll try it. Um, move the slide switch to the least popular position. 96000 must show on the display. Select 284 two more times. The top hit, blah, 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 blah. So it's telling you how to go through it all. But I want to look at the schematics and see if we can uh, see if we can figure out what, what the RAM is. Let me go look at that. Okay, folks. So I looked around. I, I couldn't find the schematics of it. They don't have them in that uh, PDF that I've got. Um, and on, by the time it got to the 490, they were no longer using this. So on the 490, the actual uh, the main CPU keeps track of all of that and then uses the display to read it out to you. Uh, but I figured we'd look at some of the chips and maybe you guys can figure it out. It appears that the voltage, um, which is basically used to keep the chip that keeps the memory running while the thing's off, goes to these two chips. These are listed as M5-6518-9. So I've tried to research that. It's obscure as hell. It looks like it's a 6518 RAM chip, maybe. I don't know. There's two of them, and the voltage appears to be going to pin 1, which on a 6518 that I found, the, the data sheet from, that was the select, which I don't know if that's where you would be sending the sustained voltage. But So there's two of those, and then this is a... 5785N. All of these run off of 9.6 volts. So like I said, 9.6 volts comes in. There, you see there's no voltage regulator. They are running it off of that. There's no 5 on anything. So uh, you've got a MM5785. MM5763. Is that what that is? Yes, MM57163, another MM57163, 
an MM5799. And a CD4069. Hmm. You'd think that would run off five. Maybe not. So, that's what we're working with. Luckily, I'm clean. The board's clean, and it appeared to be up and running. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the legs on the chips and the sockets. Notice they're all socketed, too. Makes it easy. And then I'm going to, just for giggles, I'm going to replace these little green... Um, capacitors here. There's one, two, three, there's four on this board. And the reason I'm going to do that is because on some of the 490s that I've worked on, some of these green uh, caps, they're uh, tantalum. And some of these tantalum caps will short after they get old. So I'm going to replace them with brand new electrolytic ones. Um, and then we're going to put the battery on. So the way that I've chosen to do the battery is I've got this little cell battery holder. These don't leak. And I drilled a hole right there so that I can mount this thing on the board. And then on the back, where the leg comes through, I'm going to jump it over to where it should be. I put it a little off center instead of putting it straight so that it would be away from this trace a little bit more, since there's plenty of meat right there, right? So I'm gonna put that in and I'm gonna pop a battery in, and that'll, uh, a 2032, and that'll give us the three volts. I did see somebody online mentioning that the the battery voltage on theirs was three volts, so apparently that's what we need. And then if I, whenever I looked up the uh, 6518 RAM, the sustain voltage or whatever on that uh, was two volts minimum. So a three volt battery should work if that's what these in fact are. I don't know that for sure. I think the main difference between these and a more common RAM that you might run across is that these run on 9.6 volts, which must have just been some weird time in, in um, um, integrated circuits where they weren't running off 5 or 12 or negative 5. They were running off 9.6. So if yours, by the way, you, you probably need to test that 9.6 volts on yours because if the if the uh, profit setter, the, the CPU that runs everything in the, in the, in the box, is only getting like nine volts, or it's getting ten and a half volts. They don't run right. They mess up. You'll, it'll do all kinds of weird stuff. It won't work, or it'll play the same song twice, or the display will be screwed up. It'll do all kinds of crazy stuff. So if you want to measure on the pink wire, so find the pink wire coming out of the power supply, and uh, you'll notice on the on the power supply that there is a little knob that says 9.6 volt adjustment. And you find that pink wire and use a multimeter, check that from that to ground until it's 9.6, and then turn that little potentiometer. What I like to do is turn it a little bit higher than 9.6, because it's going to lose a little bit of power in the connectors and things like that. So I put it on like 9.8 or something like that. But you got to get that pretty close or the boards don't act right. And this board runs off the same voltage. So I'm going to take these out and clean the legs and put them back in. And then I'm going to install this and put a battery in it. And then we're going to test it in the machine and see if it will remember its selections. It could be that these, if these are RAM chips, it could be that those are bad and not working. Um, so, you know, we're kind of in unknown territory here. And about the displays uh, that were blinking... If you notice the one here wasn't doing that, usually whenever that happens, it's because you've got a bad connection on your connector. So if you take this loose and just clean up the edge, and then also where it hits the displays, clean those connectors a little bit. If you've got like a little teeny tiny file that you can get down in there or something, get this nice and shiny. Um, sometimes just unplugging it and plugging it back in will, will make it work. Uh, so you, you got to get those making good contact, and you won't have that issue where some of the digits are missing or anything. While we're working on this jukebox, I figured I'd show you this. I got a present from Mr. Troxel, who is one of our watchers. He's always leaving comments down below <laughs> instead of up high. And he sent me this little note, and it says, Hey, Joe, just want now I'm Ron. But people call me Joe because at the beginning of all the videos I say, this is Joe's Classic Video Games. But I never say, this is Joe. I say, this is Joe's Classic Video Games. That's the name of our store. So I'm actually Ron, but Joe's my brother. He's on some of the videos. Hey, Joe, just wanted to send a quick note and tell you I really enjoy your videos. The last couple I watched, you kept blowing fuses. I hope these circuit breakers will help. I also threw in a coil sleeve 
remover for those stuck sleeves. Keep up the good work. So, and I believe he does repair stuff. So if you need some arcade games or pinballs repaired, give him a call or go by his website. I don't know where he's at, but it's you know I had the I had the envelope. I lost the envelope. We'll figure it out. But you might want to check out his website. But here's what he sent me. Check these out. These are circuit breakers that have been soldered to a fuse that's blown. So you can put these in a, like say you've got a fuse that keeps blowing, you can put this in and then the next time you turn it on, instead of it burning up another fuse that costs you another dollar, it'll blow this breaker. And you keep doing that until it no longer breaks the breaker. You know, you, f you figure out what's wrong and then whenever you finally get it to where it's not blowing the breaker, you take this out and you put a fuse in. Very clever! I don't have any of these, so thank you, Mr. Troxel. We appreciate that. And there's all different values. So this one is the one for 7 amp. This one, 15 amp. And this one, 3 amp. And this one, 5 amp. That's, I don't use that one a lot. 20 amp. And 10 amps. So that will come in very handy. Thank you, Mr. Troxel. And then he also sent me this, which is to remove, um, I guess, oh, you know what it does? I just figured out how it works. You put it in the end that sticks out, and because it has this little lip, it perfectly goes around it, and then you, and it pushes it back out. Because sometimes the, the coil sleeves get stuck inside the coils. I have had that problem several times, so this would have came in handy, so I'll use this. Thank you, sir. We appreciate that. Everybody go check out his website. I don't know him, except I've seen him on our website on, on YouTube, leaving us a lot of comments, and he seems like a stand-up fella to me. <laughs> All right, back to our jukebox. Okay, so I replaced the four capacitors. Clean the edge connector. I resoldered the pins on this just to make sure that they didn't have any cold solder joints. I put in the battery holder. I put the date on it, November 20, uh, of 2020. Um, put the little jumper. And that should do it. So I'm going to put it back in its case and then we'll put it back in the machine and see if it will save any of our selections. That would be really cool. Um, so if you, get, if, if you have yours, if it's giving you any numbers at all on the display, you're probably good to go. It probably works. You need to replace this battery with something like this, or um, you, you got to get some kind. You can put like wires on it and put a remote battery holder. Sometimes you can use an NV RAM, which is a non-volatile RAM, which means that it doesn't need a battery to save the selections. But since this uses such a weird setup that was only used for a little while, I doubt that they make one for that, or that I'm sure somebody could figure something out, but. It would probably be kind of complex. Somebody would have to take one of these boards and really study it and spend some time with it to figure out how to do it. Um, and the uh, the values of the capacitors, if you can't find the schematics, were 2.2 microfarad, 2.2, 2.2, and 10. Okay, so that's that. So I'm going to pop it back in, and then we'll, we'll test it and see if we can get it to save some selections. Okay, folks, we got it back in. We got the battery in there. Who knows if it's going to work, but it's doing the same thing it was doing. So we're going to see. It says, test procedure, main power off, hit tracker connected. Hmm. Move the three position slide switch to the total selection presenter, uh, position, and then turn it back on. Well, I better do it with the power off. It's telling me specifically to have the power off. <laughs> All right, we're on total selections. Power back on. Okay. Press the red clear button. That's that one that you can't really get to. Let me let me find something to hit it with. What can I use? What can I use? Now you may have noticed when I had the cover off. The buttons are full size, it's just you can't, they purposely made it where you couldn't touch them. Okay. The hit tracker 
Display must show a zero in the first digit to the right, only with the other four digits off. Huh. The three top hits display at top front of phonograph must show dash 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 in each display. Huh. Move the slide switch to the most popular position. Most popular. Popularity. I think that's right. The hit tracker display shall show a oh, zero, 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 zero. Huh. Return the slide switch to the total selection position. Add at least 12 credits. Total selection. Add at least 12 pre credits via the white add one play button on the profit setter. Mine's on free play, so I don't have to do that. And select 297 three times, 284 two times, and 185 once. Okay, so let's do that. But I gotta turn it down because if I play these records here on YouTube, they will delete this video. And that'd be horrible, wouldn't it? After all we're doing here, nobody else does all this. 297 three times. One, two, three. 284 two times. That's two times. Uh, and 185 once. All right. The hit tracker display must only show six on the first display to the right, and the three top hits display must indicate 297, 284, 185. Six. Must indicate 297, 284, 185. 297-284-185. Move the slide switch to the most popular position, top. The hit tracker display must show 97003. It does. Press the gray advance button once. The hit tracker display must change to 84002. Press the advance button again. The hit tracker display must change to 85001. Move the slide switch to the least popular position. Ninety-six thousand must show on the display. Select two eighty-four two more times. Now if I do this, 284 will overcome number one. Alright. I watched it do it in real time, people. Switch main power off and on again. All displays must retain their previous reading, so it should keep that. Okay, so what are we turning off here? This is uh, Joe Diffie Country. <laughs> Boy, I miss Joe Diffie. So I'm going to turn it off while it's playing. I don't really like to do that, but we're going to do it. Turn it back on. You would think it would cancel when it comes back on, but I guess not. Let me hit the cancel button. Okay, so you might ask, well, why didn't I play the records that you put in? It's because I think I have it set to, to forget all of the uh, 
selections when it's turned on, or it may just do it on this one automatically. Uh, but that's pretty common. You turn it off and back on, and it forgets all of the things it was supposed to play. But voila, voila, people. Now let's see what they had us play. Let's see what the most popular song now stands as in this location. What do you think? So 284 is Love Light by ABBA. That's the most popular song in here. What do you think about that? 297 is the second most popular. And that's the aforementioned C-O-U-N-T-R-Y by Joe Diffie. And then 185 More Than You'll Ever Know by Travis Tritt. I'm just going to guess all of those get taken over. I don't think all of those are going to stay the most popular selections. Alright, so I'm going to turn it off again. We'll try it one more time just to make sure that it's retaining it. Now I will tell you, if you look on it, see this little jumper wire? You probably can't see it, it's too dark. There is a jumper wire on the uh, connector, the power connector to that board. It appears to me that the power is routed in such a way, that battery power, that it runs through that jumper. So if you were to disconnect this board, the battery would no longer be connected to the RAM on the same board because it connects through that jumper. So if you take this out and put it on the bench, it resets it every time. So uh, if I were to unplug that, it would reset all of the save the settings. But we want to see if it reset all of the settings while I was standing here talking. We gave it about 30 seconds. And it's still saving it. So there we go. I think we fixed it, folks. I got lucky on this one. It was just the battery had been removed. Uh, but all, all that uh, it really needed on this one was just a new 3-volt battery. So... But that'll give you an idea, kind of the overview of how they look inside, what you need to do to get yours working again if you're interested in getting yours working. And if you don't have one of these, maybe you still found it interesting to see how they did things back in the day with 9.6 volts running the whole thing. <laughs> right? So uh, leave your comments down below. Let us know what you think. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to fix it for you. We'd like to thank everybody that's been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, if you click the links down below our video, it will take you to Amazon, and then you can purchase something there if you'd like. If you were planning on buying anything on Amazon, if you buy it after clicking our link, it gives us a little tip. So thank you to everybody that's been doing that. That's been picking up a lot lately, and we appreciate it. And then also, make sure to check out our brother channel. It's called My Brother Donnie, and he's literally my brother Donnie. And I'm always uh, hanging out with him on the weekend, uh, filming some stuff. It has nothing to do with arcade games or jukeboxes. But lately we've been working on this old little tiny, tiny, not big, this old dilapidated little tiny grocery store that we bought. And uh, we've, uh, we've been filming all of that and it's pretty fun. He's a hoot. If you think I'm crazy, you ain't seen crazy until you've seen my brother Donnie. So go check that out and I'll see you over there. So thanks for hanging out with us. I hope this helps you on your jukebox if you've got one of these hit trackers uh, that you're uh, wondering how it works and what's going on with it. And like I said from the very beginning, though, you do not need the thing. You can just take it out and unplug it if you want. Um, but I like having them working. It's little twinkly lights and kind of neat, right? Why not? So we got it up and running. And uh, if yours is missing, you can probably get one on eBay pretty cheap because a lot of people have realized you don't need the thing. But I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments down below. Give us a thumbs up again. And we will see you on the next video. Thank you.